Support for this episode is provided by Acme Tools. You can support my channel by making your next tool purchase at my Acme Tool Store. I'll have a link in the description below. This is the cherry entrance table or hallway table that I've been working on. It has a small bead at the bottom of the apron. Continuous grain running through the drawers, tapered legs, and I've just decided to add a slight curve to the front of the top, and that's what we're gonna do today. I've got a piece of half inch MDF here that I'm going to use as a pattern. It's 12 inches wide, and I'm going to cross cut it an inch longer than the top. The top is 42 inches, so I'm going to make the cross cut at 43. Next, I'll rip a piece of walnut. You could use any wood, but I happen to have this cut off. This is actually from the George Nakashima table that I made last year, and I'll have a link to that project in the description if you want to check it out. I'm going to rip this at 3 eighths of an inch, then I'll rip it again at 3 quarters of an inch so it will easily bend. Now I'll cut the stick at 44 inches and that's one inch longer than the pattern. Now I'll find and mark the center at 22 inches. And then measure over one inch on each side of the center mark. The next step is to pre-drill and countersink holes for the screws. I've measured and marked the center of the pattern at 21 and a half inches and now I can line the center mark of the stick up with the center mark on the pattern, keeping the pattern just a little bit proud of the stick and attach the stick with two screws. I forgot that I'm going to need to pre-drill and countersink holes in the end and somewhere in the middle. So two inches looks good from the end and 11 inches looks pretty good and I'll do that on both sides. So I'll need to bring this back to the drill press. I'm using a squeeze clamp on this end to temporarily hold the stick in position. Over here I've measured in an inch from the outside edge and now I can attach the stick with two screws starting from the inside. And now I'll do the same thing on this end. It's important to not over tighten the screw because it's very easy to strip the MDF. I'm also adding a few dabs of hot glue just for a little insurance. Before using the router, I'll rough cut the pattern to size on the bandsaw. Now I'll clamp the pattern to the table and use a flush cut bit in the router to finish it off.
Before cutting the curve in the front, I need to cross cut the top to length and I've decided to add a 5 degree angle as an added design element. A little painter's tape will help to avoid tear out or chipping during the cut. Now I've got the MDF pattern on the cherry top. I've got three and a half inches from the straight edge of the back to the back of the top and three and a half inches over here. And now I can trace the pattern and make this rough cut on the bandsaw. Now I have the cherry top clamped onto the pattern. The back of the pattern is at the three and a half inch mark and the pattern is one half of an inch beyond the edge and it's the same on both sides. Now I can make the finished cut with the router. I want to get that five degree angle or bevel that I have on the ends also on the front. So to do that, I'm going to flip the top upside down and measure in just a little bit more than maybe an eighth of an inch and draw a straight line. And then I'm going to measure down from the top about a sixteenth of an inch and do the same thing and use the hand plane to shape the front to those lines. Okay, well, I am really happy I decided to add the curve at the front. I think it's one of those little things that makes a big difference. This project is almost done. I just need to make the handles, apply the finish, then draw up the plans, and hopefully this will be up by next week. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Before you start your next project, click on the link in the description below for my professional woodworking plans and follow me on Instagram to see what I'm working on today. You can support my channel by making your next tool purchase at my Acme Tool Store. I'll have a link in the description below.